So Nightingale has just dropped and I'm going to be bringing you guys some of the top essential early game tips that you need to know to get some great early game success. Now first things first, you want to grab all the materials that you can. Now this is pretty standard for most survival games and this type of genre, but I'll show you why. If we go around and collect as many of these things as we can, what you will see is we gather them in our inventory and what we can then do is if you press I, go into your inventory, you can actually click on them and click extract. This will allow you to get tons and tons of essence dust very, very quickly because as you can see, it is a one for one on twigs and it is also a one for one on plant fiber. The reason I'm showing these two is because they are by far the easiest material to get your hands on in the game and there's even a way to improve this method. So as you can see here, if we go onto the extract menu, we can click 39 and it gives us extract into 39 essence. And you can see in the bottom right of my inventory interface that has gone up by 39. So this is a really fast way to gather. Now, if you go ahead and build yourself even a simple sickle like this one right here, if you go ahead and go to some simple plant fiber like this one here. Look at the bottom right of my screen. You'll be able to see how much I'm getting. We get plus one or plus two basically plant fiber each time. Now, if we go to one with the sickle and hit it, we're getting plus four, plus three. And so therefore you are going to get more, much more quickly. This also works for the trees, so you're going to be getting plant fibre from all of these. So this is going to allow you to get very, very quickly a lot of this essence dust and in turn be able to repair all of your gear, all of your equipment and be able to buy whatever you would like to buy from the essence trader right near the start of the game and progressing through the game as well because you're going to be able to buy some stuff there. I'm not going to do too much spoilers but that is a really, really quick way to get a lot of essence and essence dust. Now, the next thing here is going to be looking at that yellow bar in the middle of my screen that's going down from the 100 mark right now, and that is your stamina. You do not want to let this run out at any point in Nightingale, because if you do, you are actually going to die, and that counts if you are swimming, if you have not got enough rest, it reduces your stamina slowly until zero, and then you ultimately do die as well. So you always want to try and get yourself as much stamina as possible. Now, obviously, keeping your rest bar, which is the blue bar in the bottom left-hand corner, keeping that at full. If you haven't already worked this mechanic out, basically, you want to make a bedroll, which the game very early on tells you to do. You go up to it, you press short rest. It tops the bar up and you can do this multiple times if you are running particularly low when it is the evening you can long rest but it does require everyone on the server to long rest as well so if you're not playing solo you've got to get all of your friends or all the people you're playing with to jump on the long rest at the same time but there is a notification in the top left for that and that will obviously give you a bit more of a rest buff on the bottom there to your bar now another way to really increase your stamina is to actually have food. So if we go into my inventory here and we have a look at these mixed plants, these give you plus 30 maximum stamina. You can see the second stat down there as well as some maximum health and regeneration and stuff like that. This is actually a really, really good food and it's very simple to make. You simply head over to your campfire, click on craft item and go to mix plants. Now you will need two types of raw edible plants, but they can be the same one. So you can have mushrooms, for example, in both. Now that's not much of a spoiler because you get those very early on. You can do the same with berries and just put these in and that will actually give you something that gives you plus 30 maximum stamina. So that's very, very helpful. And on top of this, I've just been using roasted meat tier one. You can see here, prey meat works the same. And again, that gives you 16.5 extra stamina. So early doors, you are going to have to not be running all of the time, but it is literally like a two second cooldown, and then you can regenerate your stamina and go again. It's pretty good. And yeah, just don't be out swimming because as you can see from the clip on screen now, if you do get caught swimming in the ocean, you have to hope that you've got friends on the server to run out, res you, swim back, res you again, swim back. And this was quite an ordeal. So don't get caught out in the ocean with no stamina left. It's not great. If you are enjoying the video so far, guys, make sure you drop me a subscribe with the notification bell on down below so you don't miss out on any uploads. I'm going to have tons of Nightingale content coming very, very shortly. Now, crafting stations, as you will see here, if we just head over to this one, if you hold E on a crafting station, you can press inspect. Now, this will tell you if a crafting station is sheltered. As you can see from this, refinement time is decreased by 10 seconds, but the minimum refinement time is 3 seconds if something is sheltered. So you absolutely want to make sure that all of your workstations are under some sort of cover. As you can see, we've built this kind of big outhouse barn type thing. Pretty cool here. We've also got some cooking stuff inside the little house area. So again, you just want to make sure there is a roof over these to improve the speed of them. It's really, really important. If you also click on inspect on these ones that we built in more of a suitable area, that one's going to be moved shortly. You can see that warmth, so because they are near a fire, refinement time is decreased by 10 seconds again. 
and well lit, which is refinement time, is again decreased by 10 seconds. So just by having it sheltered, warm and well lit, you decrease 30 seconds per craft, which is really, really huge. Now, obviously, everything has to be three seconds, so if it's going to be less than that, it'll just stay at three. But some of those, once you start getting out of the early, early game and move into the after the tutorial stage, this is going to be massively helpful because it's going to mean some of the items that you need to refine are going to be done a lot, lot quicker. It's very simple to get this stuff done. Like I said, you just want to put a roof over. You can see in this corner here, we don't have a piece of roof here, but we do have a arch roof and then a flat roof, and that works. So you don't need the full wall. And you can see we've got a fire going there, and we have a lantern on the roof. It's very easy to do. You press B, you go in, you can create, obviously, any regular campfire. Light, there is a section for. So I won't show you all of these because I don't want to give any spoilers away, but let's say, for example, the candle. Pretty much everyone will have simple candle. You just need a wick and you can make these and that will give these stations light. So it will decrease their crafting time quite dramatically. So you want to get that done as soon as possible. Now the next thing is you want to get a follower ASAP. Now I have Lonnie, which most of you probably will have experienced so far. And I maybe got him recruited already early doors. He is on the first map that you get in your abeyance realm. These followers are very, very good for a number of reasons. They will actually go out and harvest resources for you. So if you give them a tool or they do actually come with tools as well, they'll go out and harvest resources. Now this is important because it means when you are building a base they'll pick stuff up as well as when you're traveling around and completing quests and missions and that sort of thing they will just start randomly attacking trees and bushes and mining stones etc and they will just gather those resources for you as well so they actually pick them up and on top of this if you do go down at any point they will revive you which is hugely beneficial you can revive your follower and they can revive you instantly with other players you do need to hold down the revive button for a little set amount of time it's about four or five seconds not too long but you can get instantly revived by a recruited follower. So this is really important to have. Now, one thing that you need to know with followers is if you go into press E with them, and then you click on manage equipment and inventory, you will see the gear that they have equipped. So you can obviously upgrade this to make them better as you progress in the game. You'll also see the materials that they've collected. So as you can see here, my guy's got some stone blocks. He's got some shimmering ore. And you can also see what tools and weapons they have. Now, simply putting these in the inventory isn't enough. What you actually need to do is go ahead and equip one. So you can see by the little blue dot in the top left what is currently equipped. So Lonnie is currently using a makeshift wood axe. This means whenever we go near trees, he's going to start chopping them down. And if you've been getting annoyed by your followers doing this, there is a simple fix for it. Or if you want them to gather other stuff as well, you would simply go on to a different thing. So, for example, the makeshift sickle here. You click, right click on that and click equip. And that will equip that item to the follower. As you can see there, he's now got the sickle. So you'll go around and harvest plant fiber and stuff like that. So you can give them whichever tool you want. Or indeed, you can equip something like a weapon here. And then they will simply just fight for you instead of gathering resources. Because sometimes mid-fight, they'll just go and chop down a tree instead of fighting for you. So if you want them to be more of a warrior and a helper in terms of combat, definitely equip them with a weapon. Now, personally, I do like the fact that they can gather resources. Because any resources they have in their inventory... They will actually go ahead and add to any buildings that they can when you place them down. So when you go into the build menu and you actually place down a schematic for something, if they have resources for it, they will fill it up. So it's also a really good way if you're going out and you're gathering and you start to fill up your own inventory. They don't seem to have a weight capacity, it's just slots. So just go ahead and give them as much as you can and that will free up some weight in your own inventory. Now the next thing here is healing salve. This is very, very important. You want to be crafting as much of this as you can. Now, what a healing salve will do, as you can see there, is it gives you a health regeneration slash M, so 10. I think that means 10 health a minute or 10 health a moment. I am, I'm honestly not sure, but it's pretty quick and it does give you a decent amount of health. I think maybe 10 health is what this whole thing gives you, quick regeneration of. And the effect duration is for five seconds. So it's actually very, very helpful. But what it doesn't tell you, which is crucially, crucially helpful, is that healing salve will heal yourself if you break your ankle or sprain your ankle. So if you jump off something like this, you'll see if you don't pull your umbrella out, it says falling impact. Now, if it's a higher height than that, you can actually damage or break your leg. So I'll just, for the benefit of the video, show you how this works. If we go ahead and run up to the top peak of our house here and we just kind of jump off, you'll see 
Yeah, look, bottom left there and in the bottom right says your ankle has been sprained. Now, if we go ahead and press F and go over to our healing salve, which is number six, and then we go ahead and press F again to use it, you'll see in the bottom left that, that I've now got a healing thing and your ankle has been healed in the bottom right interface there. So this is crucially, crucially helpful if you are someone like me that likes to adventure around and just kind of dive off things, not really realizing. Make sure you make plenty of healing salve and take that with you. It's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of energy when you have to run around really slowly with a broken ankle. You can just get rid of it with that quick tip. Now, another really important thing that's not immediately obvious is if you press M to open up your map interface, you can see obviously things like the level of the realm you're in as well as the map itself and what cards you currently have active. But little button here that says travel to respite. Now, if you are on your abeyance realm, your home realm where you've got your estate, this will simply take you back to your estate, Karen. So it will fast travel you back. So say, for example, mine is right here in the top left. If I travel all the way down to the bottom right and I think, oh, I just need to go back to base, don't need to run past and gather resources, just need to drop stuff off and carry on with what I'm doing travel to that and it will take me back to my estate Karen. Now this also does work on other realms to bring you back to your abeyance estate realm however obviously you might not be able to get back to that realm so you do have to take that into account but it is a fast way once you've finished gathering whatever you needed to get from the realm or completing the quest you can then travel back to your estate realm very easily by pressing that button there. Now if you go into a chest interface you will see a button here on the left side box which is your inventory that says move all items. What this will do is if you have items that are similar to what are in the chest, it will place those items onto the stacks that are already in that container. But if there is free slots as well, for example here you can see we have seven free slots, it would put any of the items that aren't already stackable from my inventory into those available slots and create a new stack. So it just basically will transfer. Now if you've got a full chest, for example, one of these chests will be full pretty much or nearly full. Let's say that this one was full and I press move all items, it would just simply stack anything I already had in that chest onto the chest again. And therefore, we need that you're not having multiple different stacks of the same item in different chests if you do use that function. It's very useful, saves a lot of time. And also one thing to note in here as well, you can click container permissions and you can allow survivors to have container permissions and it will basically give the survivor access to everything you have in that chest so that by default is unticked but you can allow them to have that as well that is something that is worth noting in these containers now the umbrella is something you can get fairly early on i'm not going to spoil how to get it or how to craft it but as you can see on my world right now it is raining and the umbrella obviously does its natural function of protecting you from the rain but more importantly it also protects you from hail which if you haven't yet experienced it will damage you when it comes down so this is really important to craft early on as well as this, of course, it does allow you to glide fall for all the price of stamina, which is very useful, stops you from breaking your ankle, even if you have got the healing self. And it also allows you to get to some locations which you might not otherwise have been able to get to, shall we say. And it also has the added effect of if you go to the desert, it also provides shade and protects you from the hot debuff. So this is a very, very useful item. You want to get this as early on as possible. In my opinion, I would say as soon as you start the game and you've got past the tutorial, you want to build and unlock this umbrella because it's going to be very useful on pretty much all aspects of your adventure. Now, one thing I did want to quickly cover, and I'm not going to show gameplay of it because I don't want to give any spoilers. This is a beginner's tips and tricks. But all I will say is that chests around the world do not always look like traditional chests. They can be pillars. They can be other types of things that look like containers. It should essentially be containers, but you can go up to these and loot them in the different biomes and areas that you go to. So if something looks a little bit strange, do check if you can interact with it because it might be that it is a chest that you can actually grab some loot from. And one final thing is if you go into your settings and go on to keybinds if you scroll yourself down a little bit you'll see that there is a auto run in the game which is actually by default on numlock if you haven't figured this out yet it's massively helpful definitely put that onto whatever button you want but use the auto run feature it's a very very helpful so that is pretty much going to be it for the beginners tips and tricks that you need to know if you found this video useful make sure to drop me a subscribe and a like down below it's massively massively appreciated and would really help out the channel let me know in the comments if you found any other nifty early game tips and tricks that i haven't mentioned in today's video and other than that make sure you've got the notification bells on with the channel because i'm going to be posting tons more nightingale content very very shortly so stay tuned and i'll catch you guys again very very shortly on a new update. Upload. Take care and peace.